Hey guys, before we get started, Chris Henke sent me a photo of his latest build, 20 inch truth at all white. That bike looks really, really sick. Thanks for sharing that, Chris. Let's get into the magazine. All right, guys, welcome back. Welcome back. It's magazine night. So tonight we're going to do uh, BMX action, September, 1986. This magazine's pretty cool. I, I don't remember it very well. I recognize the cover. So I didn't go through it yet, so every page will be kind of a surprise. <laughs> but anyway, uh, this is the 10-year anniversary of BMX Action. This is going to be a good one. I was thinking about 1986. And so 1986 was the last year I played baseball. And I remember I took a break from BMX racing because I had to ask my parents, hey, can I play baseball again? You know, and I wanted to do both. And, you know, they were like, no, you can't do both. You got to pick one or the other. They didn't really want me stressing over trying to do two sports and going to school. So I played baseball for an entire season. So I didn't race a lot in 86, but I did come back and race, which was really funny because I couldn't wait to race again. And when I did get in there, I started grinding. I was racing like Friday nights, Saturday nights, trying to get the points up. And I actually did really well. I finished number 54 in my district and it was a Cal 4 district. So pretty big district. So that was kind of one of my best finishes. And that's why I tend to use number 54 as much as I can. I kind of think of it as like my lucky number. So I use it quite a bit. Uh, but anyway, that's um, this is what we're going to get into tonight. So let's dig into it and see what we got. See you guys. All right, let's get into it. So on the cover right away, I really love the color. I've always liked the red, white, and blue colors mashup. I always thought that looks really good. Uh, this is actually Toby Henderson uh, doing the test. And they're testing the Diamondback Viper, which was kind of like an ent well, was definitely an entry level uh, race bike, but it was a pretty quality looking bike for the money. Uh, I love the I love this shot. You can see that uh, Toby's got you know his classic JT leathers here, and I can't tell what's on the pants. It could say Hutch on them. You know, I really can't tell if it does or not. That's my best. Oh no, it says Action on it. So this is an actual BMX Action test uniform. He's got the JT uh, jersey on, full, pay, full face JT helmet, Oakley goggles, really good touch. I love this Haro plate here. Uh, this is just a great shot with the red bands. These were, <laughs> I'm going to stop and just make a comment really quick. I wore a lot of these style bands. These were my favorite bands ever. And I went through so, so many pairs of these. And the red ones were always my favorite. It was either red, black, or white. And I had some gray ones that were really cool too, but the red ones seem to be the ones I always went back to get. I, I really like that one. Uh, let's see what else is in here though. We got an ABA NorCal National. Did anyone stop Ronnie? Well, we'll find out. We had a new breed of pros, how they will, how they made it to the top. So we'll take a look at that. We got a glove shootout and which ones are best for you for the gloves. And really quick, I want to point this out. This is the 10 year anniversary of BMX action from 1976 to 1986. Now, the one key magazine I'm missing is the BMX action magazine that has all the covers from, from the first 10 years. And I sold that magazine on eBay. I knew it was gonna sell fast. So I, was, I didn't care if I was gonna sell it. And of course it sold quick. And I think I sold it to somebody in Australia and he paid a lot. I, I wanna say it must've been about 70 bucks for that magazine so you know my I got greedy I guess now I kind of wish I had it but it's okay let's let's open up the magazine let's see what's going on in there so we got the uh, Haro ad on the inside cover these are your freestyle guys here so not a bad ad uh, I love the how the whole mag the whole cover I'm sorry the whole photo is black and white but with just some splash of color you can see that peregrine wheel right there in the aqua green and then the yellow <laughs> the yellow vans right here and everything else is black and white uh, so really well done i like it let's see what's going on on the inside cover here we got deer gork racing the bullfrog aba spring national stockton california i actually went to that race so i'm really anxious to see what that looks like we have uh, dirt new breed pros the tune testing the diamondback viper the glove guide of course outtakes and then who's on this cover, right? Who's on this page right here? Number 40. Oh, it's just New Breed of Pros. I guess we'll figure out who that is here in a moment. Because right now, I, I couldn't tell you guys. I feel, I think that's Slavic. That would be my best guess. So we'll find out if I was right. Let's go to the next page. 
Oh, by the way, that inside the cover shot was by Wendy. Beautiful shot. Okay, let's go to the next page here. Oh, okay, so guys, this one, it's like not the most exciting ad, but it, it is one of my favorites because it's just so clean. You get, it's just GT We Race. You gotta love it. You got Tommy Bracken sitting on the tailgate here of what looks to be like a Ford Bronco. And he's got his GT just parked here. He's drinking his Gatorade. And you know, it's weird because you're looking at this and you think to yourself, that could be any of us at a local race just sitting there wondering, watching the races, waiting for your turn to go. And it's just, I love this shot. I There's everything about it. I like it. The backdrop and the, and the lighting, everything looks really, really cool. What do we got here? We got the General for Tricks. So they got Generals came out with their own freestyle line of bikes. And of course they had the uh, scooters. And again, I wasn't a big fan of the scooters, but they were really a rage. Boy, those things were super popular. I remember seeing them like absolutely everywhere. I, I had heard a story. I don't know where it was from or where I read it from, but Diamondback, not Diamondback, Mongoose had something called a Moose Goose. And correct me if I'm wrong, guys, and I'm going to go off my memory, but the Moose Goose had a very tall uh, tube in the front. Uh, the down tube was really, really big, and the Moose Goose was kind of a flop. It didn't go anywhere. So they had a ton of the frames sitting in the Mongoose warehouse, and they ended up utilizing these, these tube pieces to make scooters. Don't know how accurate that is. I just remember reading. Okay, Holiday Inn. Oh, this is pretty cool. We got a Holiday Inn ad in BMX Action. That's really cool. A great way to raise team spirit to lower team hotel rates. Look at the 70s style BMX race bike there. It's like a Schwinn Sting Stingray right there. That's really, really cool. All right. We got a cool Skyway ad here, but unfortunately it's all freestyle at the time. This is pretty much where Skyway was, where their heads were in the freestyle world. We got Scotty Freeman here. And Robert Peterson, this guy was a great, great flatliner, right? Or flat, <laughs> flatliner, flatlander. I've seen a lot of videos of him. He was pretty awesome. Oh, here we go. We got Deer, Deer Gork. All right, let's read one. Let's see. Let's go to the lie detector test. Deer Gork. Nobody believes me that I live in a big house with a lot of cousins. My first cousin is Felipe. He's 16 and has two red lines, two red line RL20Ss. Or all, yeah, RL20Ss. Uh, one Haro Master, a GT Pro Series. My other cousin, Franklin, he has got a Hutch Windstyler and a Hutch Pro Raider and a Diamondback Hot Streak. My third cousin, Will, is 20 and he has a Kuahara Nova and a Dino Comp 2. I've got a GT World Tour uh, Pro and a GT Pro Performer, a Skyway Street Beat, a Skyway Street Styler, and a GT Mach 1. What should I... <laughs> What should I do to make people believe me? And this was from uh, Rad, Little Rad Oscar Gonzalez out of Maywood, California. And then let's see what Gork says. You'd have to admit that it is kind of hard to believe, but hey, I believe I believe you. Send me the picture of all 14 bikes together and I'll believe you even more. <laughs> so that was Gork's response. That's a lot of bikes, man. 14 bikes in one household. Let's read one more. Okay, this one says one on one, what's our, sorry, one and one U and one T. No idea what the hell kind of title that is. Let's read it again. One N, one U, and one T. Okay, this page contains seven A's, two C's, five D's, 28 E's, eight F's, five G's. I'm not going to read any more. That's ridiculous. Let's go to another one. <laughs> Dear Gork. In this sense, I think you'd better revoke Jason Wyman's world record for BMX wallpaper. I have 150 pictures on my ceiling alone, 143 square feet of BMX and freestyle, no lie. Not to mention the other 68 pictures on the walls and doors that have nothing to do with BMX. But still, 303 pictures total is a lot. Anyone want to challenge me? P.S. This is true. I, I see it every day. Daryl's mom. <laughs> so Daryl Bates from State and Oregon and Daryl's mom, Gloria Bates, even even uh, backed him up on it. And that's really cool. It's, and let's see what Gork says. Good try, Daryl. You held the record for one week. You did two. Randy Shaw of British, in British Columbia. But two weeks ago, Jim Linson of Anna, Illinois, individually listed his 394 pictures. You got it, Jim. No one has tried to challenge or stick stickered, fridged, 
the record. So I'm happy to say that BMX action has prevailed once again. Wow. <laughs> Look at this shot. Look at all the photos on this guy's wall. And he's got the Diamondback uh, banner back there. Look at the TV. Oh, man, that brings back memories. Those old boxy TVs. But that's pretty cool. Yeah, every we all did it. We had pictures all over our walls. I, I'm going to tell you, I didn't have 300. I did definitely didn't wallpaper my room, but I had plenty of BMX-related photos on my wall and in my locker in high school. All right, let's keep going. We got the Tioga ad here. Lots of freestyle colors here on the tires and the freestyle handlebars. Uh, we've got a couple laid-back seat posts here. We've got the one with the brace. And then, of course, the straight post. All the colored... Um, all the pastel colors for the uh, headsets, seat, seat clamps, pretty cool. Even the chains are colored. So this is more of a freestyle related page, but still you gotta, you gotta give it up. That's really cool looking. Lots of nice colors. Let's go on to the next page. We got more Dear Gork. We'll skip that one so it won't take too long with this magazine review. Got an OP ad here. Man, I can't tell you guys <laughs> how much I wore OP. I loved OP t-shirts. Uh, and then, oh wow, look at the performance quality, GT performance parts. Look at the GT frame and fork set right here. You got their hubs, handlebars, pads, power discs, headsets, stem, tires. This is just great looking stuff. I love it. Look at this frame and fork. Man, there is something about Chrome Molly, guys. I love it. And check it out. They, uh, <laughs> they put a, on the freestyle frame, they crossed it out. <laughs> they said, nope, this is just our race stuff. That's really cool. I never noticed that before, by the way. So far, I'm going to say this magazine, uh, I'm, I'm almost positive I've seen it before, but it, it is a little bit blurry. Okay, Spring Nationals, and this is going to be in Stockton, California. Now, I did mention at the beginning of the video, I took time off from racing to play baseball. Uh, so by the time this race came around, I probably had just got back into... Uh, into racing so I remember wearing the t-shirt to school for the race event t-shirt and everybody I think it was funny because the back of the t-shirt it said stroke until it's broken Stockton California you know how much shit I got for that shirt everybody was like stroke until it's broken <laughs> that's pretty funny anyway let's read this we got sheepdog here one, um, let's see whole let's see sheep doggy won the whole thing and gave the 17 expert class a tour around the track here on the right is uh, on his outside where Sean Texas slammed his head. Oh, wow. He hit his head right here. I think this is where the bridge is, by the way. And then your left is Wendy balancing on the bridge. Try not to knock her off. Okay. Oh, yeah. So Wendy must have been up here taking the shots and she was like really close to the race action. Uh, this race was pretty cool for me, except I crashed in every single moto. I didn't really do achieve anything in that race. Oh, look at this shot right here. Uh, 15 experts getting hectic. Danny Milwe, number 11, is flying. He took second in open and fourth in class. Robert McPherson, three, got the class win with a great accomplishment. Matt Hayden, hiding behind Danny, surprised everyone by showing up in free agent threads. Oh, cool. And won the open. Sean Callahan, two, got raspberries on his aunt, so he crashed right there. There's Sean Callahan with all the 0-9 gear. That's pretty cool. Look how the track looks, you know. You can see that it's it's <laughs> it's not smooth as glass. But, you know, it's just the way the tracks were. Maybe they were rougher and bumpier, but, you know, that's just BMX. I don't think anybody complained about that particular track. And I went to this race. My Aunt Rachel took me and my cousin James uh, to this race, and it was really cool of her because she took the time out to drive us out there on a Saturday so we can race and both of us did horrible, unfortunately. I mean, <laughs> I just kept crashing, and James didn't make it out to the main. He came close, though. He came really close. Uh, and then we ended up getting, like, the greatest pizza ever. I just don't remember where we ate after that. And then here we go. We got factory power light rider Jamie Keelan struts his stuff out of the turn two while Eric Carter attempts the inside swoop. Eric Carter got it, wound up getting first and 16 expert. Keelan took third. Wow. Look at Chicken George Seavers here. This is a great shot. Love it. Love it. This is awesome. Seavers twilighted. Love it. All right, let's go back. Oh, here we go. Now, I totally remember this because I remember Ronnie uh, at this race, and I was telling my cousin, I go, man, that guy's fast. He was just destroying everybody at that race. That says, before you knock the number plate, look at he's rocking the square number plate with the one on it. 
let us tell you the significance. In 1979, that very same plate was hexed by an old gypsy lady by the name of Wanda. Richie Anderson got hold of it, zip-tied it to his bars. With that plate, Richie got number one ABA 1980. Well, the day before Stockton, Ronnie dug it out of Richie's closet, dusted it off, and wondered if that old hex still worked. He doubled. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so awesome. The only other person I've ever seen just rock that square plate like that is Donnie Robinson. So that's really, really cool. We got Danny Milwey here. It says Danny Milwey's house is second home. It's the second home for Kevin Hall, third home for Tommy Bracken, Pete Longcaravich. Three, four guys have some gnarly gates practices. Or those four guys have some gnarly gate practice sessions on the weekends. And you can see it's helping Danny. So can you imagine, you know, you're Danny Milwey, you're a teenager. And you're doing gates with Kevin Hall, Tommy Bracken, Pete Longkarovich. Yeah, you're going to get nothing but faster working out with those guys. That's a really cool advantage. Don't know who this, who the heck this is, but the pick is rad. Check it out, this little kid. This is cool. Whoever you are, man, I hope that you see this video because you got into BMX action. Love it. You didn't get identified because your number plate, they couldn't see it, I'm assuming, but it's just a great, great, great shot. Let's keep on going. We got Sean Texas here with his little brother Alex. Holy moly, that guy's massive too. And we got, oh, look at Dana Griffin, number, rest in peace, number 18, has a weird haircut. Jeff Donnell, number four, has a rad mini truck, both jammed. I've seen Jeff Donnell's mini truck in Trucking Magazine, I believe. It was, I think it was a Datsun, orange Datsun pickup. Could be wrong, but I think I got that right. Chad Henderson here, he, won, he was uh, due for a big win. It didn't happen, but he was rocking the Kuahara. And here we go here, Cindy Ainsworth, legs don't fail me now. Cindy Ainsworth is seen here experiencing the dreaded last straight lunge. A lot of people lost the race coming out of the, coming out from under the bridge. Underneath the bridge was really cool because you kind of corkscrewed down and went under the bridge. Hopefully there's a rendering of the, of the track so I can show you a better idea of what it looked like. Oh, here's Richie and Ronnie. Let's take a look at this picture right here. That's pretty cool. Let's see what it says. The famous, fearless, and always fun Anderson brothers. No one can say they're slow. Both of, both made all three of their mains. Ronnie went home with one thousand eight hundred eighty bucks richer for the weekend, and then Richie picked up three hundred twenty bucks. Not bad. I'll take that eighteen hundred, especially. Oh, here we go. Here's the rendering. Okay, this is perfect. So if we look at the track, I can tell you everywhere I crashed. In one of my one of my motos. I was in probably about third. Everybody swung wide, and I tried to go inside and slipped a pedal, lost it. And I think on the second, my second moto, I crashed somewhere over here by these doubles. And in the third moto, I think I went down somewhere over here. I can't remember particularly, but I remember thinking I'd never finished an entire lap <laughs> in the whole week and the whole day. I just didn't finish a lap. Um, pretty disappointing, but it was still a lot of fun. You know, going to nationals was always intimidating for myself and, you know, my cousin, because we just didn't go to a lot of nationals. So when you get to a national race, it's just, uh, I can't tell you how nerve wracking it is when you've never done it before, or I've done a few nationals, but when you don't do it very often, because you're surrounded by people that are just great at what they do. And they're and going to a national is almost like a local race, but once your nerves calm down and you realize you're just racing other kids, it's it's just as fun. It's actually more fun than a local. It's just a long day. And then let's see who won A Pro or Double A Pro. Ronnie Anderson won Double A. Pete Longkarich took second. Todd Slavic picked up the third. Gary Ellis with the fourth. Mike Rand the fifth. Richie Anderson sixth. Eric Group picked up the seventh. Tommy Bracken's got the eighth. Pro Cruiser Ronnie Anderson won that again. Frank Post picked up second. And then Eric Root picked up the third. Not a lot of money on the Pro Cruiser side because the win was worth 160 bucks. And then if they only paid out the top three. Frank got $75 and Eric picked up 50. So there wasn't a whole lot of money in that. Pro Open though, Todd Slavic won that one, 360 bucks. Gary Ellis picked up the second at 160, and then uh, Rich Fleming picked up third at $100. And it looks like Ronnie got 480 for winning Double A uh, that day. Here's the B Pro class, John Anderson. Now remember John, he was racing for CW, I believe at the time, and he was looking really fast. I saw him doing really well. 
that day, and he won B Pro. Corey Collum took second, and then Dex uh, Arcibald picked up the third, and so that's pretty good. That was pro. Look at Mike. Uh, Mike King won the 16 and over open, and then 16 open. Matt Hayden won it. Sam Ariano won the 14 open. Joe Tippett won 13 open. George Sievers picked up 12 open. Kevin Burnell won the 11 open. And I'll stop right there. Let's look at the older expert classes, though. Let's see where they're at here. Here we go. 11 expert. So 17 and over expert. Kevin Hall took the win. Terry Tanette picked up second. And Dana Griffin got third. 16 expert. Eric Carter won that. Greg Eubanks picked up second. And then Jamie Keelan picked up third. 15 expert. Robert McPherson won it. Matt Hayden picked up second. And Kenny May got third. And then 14 expert Parnell Haley. Brian Lopes took the second, and then Rob Grandequist got third. 13 expert Aaron Sally won it. Joe Tippett picked up second, and then Craig Gordon picked up third. And then finally, 12 expert Justin Green got that one. Chris Sanchez and Randy Simpson. So those are just some of the finishes for the day. Pretty cool. I didn't stick around for the mains. <laughs> we were eating pizza. Now, this is a great shot. You got Diz here. Uh, Diz here. Now, Diz Hicks, I was watching, I think I mentioned in my last video, I was watching the uh, Joe Kid on a Stingray uh, DVD that I have, and they did a lot on freestyle, and they talked about Diz Hicks and the whole freestyle team that he was with, Gork's freestyle team, and he was riding for CW, and this guy was super entertaining to watch ride. I mean, I was watching him and some of his videos, and everything he does is just all pure entertainment super fast and rock and roll, you know, type thing. And, you know, it was, it's really, really, really interesting story. He doesn't look anything like this anymore. He looks like a D Snyder from Twisted Sister, <laughs> but that's pretty cool. And then check out the girls in the background. You got to love that. Okay. Let's move on. Burton snowboards. We've got slick cables, the bike gallery, and then let's go to the next page here. Redline wins. We got Greg Hill and RL Osborne, both sponsored by Redline. That's a pretty cool shot. And then we have that Frankfurt BMX pad right here. We got a Rockville BMX, and then we have Dirt. Now with Dirt, let's let's read something short here. Let's look if we can find anything BMX related. Oh, here we go. The newest factory boys. Haro Racing has signed Danny Milway to full factory. Tone Orlando has been picked up by Boss, makers of the bike that nearly everyone in Northern California rides. Also, back on Boss is Jerry Crazy J.J. Jones, who briefly departed to go to 09. Free Agent is building a backup, uh, is building a backup team. Wait, let's read that again. Free Agent is building backup another hot team. That makes zero sense. <laughs> they need to, like, somebody should have proofread this. The latest Quickster... To wear the yellow and light blue is Matt Hayden. So Matt Hayden joined free agent. Matt, and let's see, with Matt, Slavic, and John Hamilton, they're back to a killer team status. That's awesome. X Factory Boys, that's lengthy Leary click list from Florida. Let's see, Bill Madden has been dropped from MCS because of some major MCS budget cuts. MCS's race team happenings have taken a nosedive ever since team manager Mindy Abramson moved out to Southern California to be closer to fiance Jeff Potema. Terry Tanette, ex of CW, since last year is taking a three month break from racing to work on more seriously and get into bodybuilding. Uh, he should look like Schwarzenegger by the end of the summer or at least like Sean Texas. That's pretty cool. All right, let's keep going. Oh, this is a cool ad. So we got a CW ad here. I know I've seen this one before. This is a cool, really, really cool ad. You got your freestyle team here and you got your race guys down here and then of course they got the bikes you got a full line of race bikes looks like you got four to choose from and three different freestyle bikes to choose from so that's really cool first class bmx and then we have mt racing this was mt racing even got into their uh freestyle world as well it's really crazy how every single manufacturer was like producing both it's like you couldn't survive on just a race bike you had to have a freestyle bike because this was just booming so much and look how much more the freestyle bike is compared to the race bike the race bike goes for 194.95 the
the freestyle bike goes for $249.95. So it's definitely a jump if you're going to get a freestyle bike. So we're going through this magazine fast, guys. We got more Deer Gork here, and we've had the uh, Redline ad for Par oh, I'm sorry, the Paragrine ad, and we got RL here. This is a really, really cool shot. Ukiah ad, and we got some Susie Hubs here, and then, of course, more Deer Gork. TNT makes winners. Nice TNT frame, by the way. That's a really slick, slick frame. Ah, here we go. History repeats itself. You got your Diamondback ad. And then look at all these cups, man. You got the 1983, 1984, 1985, and 1986. Number one team. I believe these are Nora cups. History repeats itself with Diamondback. I've mentioned before, these are my favorite plates. These little flow panels. I love them. All right, let's go to the next page. New breed. Here we go. Todd Slavic. Okay, that was the free agent writer that we were looking at. This is a great shot of Todd. I like it a lot. So Todd Slavic was, uh, let's see what it says here. There are a lot of up-and-coming pros. This guy is the most up-and-coming. Todd Slavic is going up fast and doesn't plan on coming down for a while. It's a great shot. I heard of an interview with him on the Dirty Knobs podcast. It's a great interview. Ooh, Travis Chipris was an up-and-coming pro for Mongoose. That's a great shot. And then we had Todd Blazer for Elf. This is a really cool shot as well. Dang, we had a lot of good guys coming in. Richard Fleming. He was racing for Quickline at the time. That's a great shot. And we had Cody Smart. Oh, yeah. Dude, that's a great shot. I love the orange with the blue. It's like very NASCAR looking to me. Love it. And then finally, uh, Spanky Campbell. And that he's from Coastal Bike Supply. So that's really, really cool. Those are your up and coming pros for 86. We got West BMX East. Man, guys, we're almost done. This app magazine is all ads. We got Action BMX Cycle Company. <laughs> here we go. We got a, uh, a comic book here, a comic strip here, and this is called The Tune. This is really, really cool, and I don't know who did the artwork for this. Is this Gork's handiwork? Because this is... No, no, Bob Harrell drew, drew it. But check out, just check out the illustrations. I won't read it. But look at the illustrations on that. Wow. Love it. Bob's got some... Man, that guy's an artist. I wish I could draw. I could barely do stick figures, so not much of an artist. We got the Nighthawk BMX ad here. And here's a great shot. This is a great one. This is Toby Henderson doing the Henderson. You know, the one foot off like that with the cross up. That's a great shot. This is at Honda Hills. I'm assuming this is Southern California. That's a great, 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 great shot of Toby. Oh, check this one out. This must be Harry Larry, yeah. Full tilt, toe tapping, knee slapping, Santo lizard super sliding. Say that five times really fast. I can barely say it once. Great shot of Harry Larry, though. He was there doing the test as well. This is a great, great shot. Let's keep going. Oh, look at this one. I love this one. You got Eddie King and, uh, and Harry Larry. This is just a beautiful shot. Love it. It looks like Harry's on his personal. Well, maybe this is a, this could be the same bike in Chrome, or I don't. I doubt that's Harry's personal bike because of the CW style handlebars and the reflectors on the pedals. So they were probably testing both bikes out. That's a great shot. Harold and Eddie. It says Harold and Edward cutting loose. Wendy had to beg them to take the chain guards off the Diamondbacks. They wanted to hear them rattle. <laughs> I'm glad they took the chain guards off here. Here's a great shot. Here's that Supra. I believe that belonged to, uh, I think that was, um, was that Mike King Supra? Out in front, Harry's Castle or Henderson's new Supra. Oh, that was uh, Toby Henderson's Supra. The Larry Z, and Larry had a 280Z, and the 84 King of Porsche 1944, I'm sorry, 944. You got Eddie King's 944 Porsche there. Great shot. Great shot. Want to know why this man's so happy Eddie was Bought another house for $130,000 and is running out his old one. Yes, rolling in the dough at the ripe old age of 21. Can you imagine how much his, that house is worth now that he bought for hundred thirty grand? It's probably like $1.3 million or more. Let's see. Harry's dog just had four puppies. Also, he and Denise just found out they have a little Larry on the way. That's really cool. And then here's a shot of the Diamondback seat. Oh, they bent the hell out of that. 
Is it true that Taiwan is buying used TV trays from America and making seat posts out of them? Could be. <laughs> seat posts, how they got bent. Here's another great shot of Harry here. Check out the feet. Oh, I love how his feet are kind of just barely on the pedals. You can see they're just kind of like tilted to the side there. Perfect, perfect feet position. Makes for great, great, great photos. That's just awesome. Love it. And this is the bike that they tested right here, by the way. And what was the going price for this bike? I wonder what that was for. $189. Wow. That was cheap. Here's your bike for $189. You too can have a Diamondback. That is pretty awesome. We got our skateboard ad here as usual. Oh, look at this shot. Where does Woody Itson go without his trick star? Nowhere. Look at that Porsche Carrera. Oh my God. That's an awesome, awesome shot. Wow, I wonder whose car that was. And then we, I don't know if it was his or not, but that is just freaking amazing. Lee Chi, got a Hutch ad here. Never settle for second best. Just a simple black and white Hutch ad. And then, man, Dear Gork was still going on here. I wish I had time to read more of them, guys, but that would just be a whole day in itself. Here's your gloves. This is pretty cool. I would imagine this would have been a lot bigger, but we got something called Sinisalo, uh, Malcolm Smith, 09 wrist straps. Those are so cool, I never owned any. Looks like AXO Series 29. GT Half Breed, I had some, or JT Half Breed, I had some of those. Pacific Palms, and then Malcolm Smith Pro Comms, JT Lifelines, O'Neill Bullets, and then we had the Haro Standout Leather. I always thought these were so nice, these Haro gloves. I always liked those. I never had them, but I just always admired them. We got, what is that, uh, Gear Oakley Factory Pilot, and then we have Hallman CW Cycling. Those look like... Uh, <laughs> Fishnet, <laughs> Haro Tech Series, those look like super futuristic, and then O'Neill Ultra 2s, Hallman USA, Fox Paw Protectors, those are really cool, and Fox Dirt Paws, all very cool. Let's see, the thing about these leather gloves though, it's, I mentioned it before, but man, they do protect your hands, but it, it felt so weird grabbing the grips, like I I couldn't feel like I can get a true feel for the grip, so I didn't really prefer those. I really like the uh, JT had those cotton gloves uh, that, that had like a little rubber like palms. Those were really cool. And I know they didn't protect your hand as well, but they were awesome. I loved them. And then here we go here. We got the BMX Action 10 Years of Kicking Butt Velcro Wallet. <laughs> I definitely had a Velcro wallet in the 80s. And then you got your perform with the best. Here's the GT freestyle frame. And we saw the race frame earlier. And we got the free coaster ad for ACA, ACS with Woody Itson. Typical sticker ad. And man, you guys, we did this one fast. I'm at 31 minutes, so I guess that's about right. And then we got this great dyno ad with uh, Eddie Fiola here, Team GT. That's a great, great shot of Eddie right there. And that, guys, that is about it. Oh, look at this one. Almost missed it. Uh, controlled Flying W, the cowboy showing off his potential. That's a great shot. I love the oversized numbers on that 09 plate. I think that looks so cool. I know we're into the small plates now, but that looked really, really cool. And then we have something called Hanter Freestyle Cycle Company, another freestyle bike here from a company called Hanter. They had three different models out. Everybody was getting in the game, man. And then we got our, our Tioga ad in the back. And then that is, that is it. September 1986 BMX action. We did that in 32 minutes. I feel like I went a little fast. Sorry, guys. But this is a great magazine. Uh, again, guys, please like and subscribe. We will be back next week. We're going to do a race video in about five or six days from now. Uh, but then, at, like always, the channel is getting better and better and bigger and bigger. I'm getting more and more likes, more and more subscriptions. I'm still about 70% that don't subscribe, so if you haven't hit the subscribe button, please do that. Other than that, you guys have a great night, and I'll see you in the next one. I got it.
At first it was hard. Nobody believed me. Ever since then, I'm making it clear. This my year. This my year. I hustle in the dark with a bright my head. Get the bright idea.